Hello, welcome to my daily recipe. Now today I'm cooking with one of my favourite ingredients, which is a Reeves Muntjac. Now the Muntjac deer, this little fella here, is an introduced species, it's an invasive species in Britain. Brought into Britain in the 1900s by the Duke of Bedford, who was very keen on that sort of thing, um, and his estate at Woburn in Bedfordshire. And since then the deer has moved all over the country and we have a very large population around where we live here in the Cotswolds. It's an Indian species of deer originally and uh, it's, it's a delicious eating animal. It's really one of the best. What I've got today is some diced munjak off the shoulder, the haunch and the shin of the deer. And uh, I'm going to make a curry. Now it's an Indian deer. It, it, I feel that it's an appropriate thing to do with it. So I'm going to make munjak curry. Got a bunch of ingredients. We're going to make a start straight away by browning off some of this venison. In goes some of our lovely chunks of venison, our munjak. And we're going to brown this nicely. And you see I've got some nice big chunks of meat. Okay, in this central pan, I'm going to start making the sauce for the curry. Now, what do you want out of a good curry? I think what I'm after here is a really sort of flavoursome sauce that's got spice and a little bit of heat, and it's complex and really delicious. And it will really go with the delicious flavour of the munjak, which is a gorgeous tasting animal. So I'm going to put some onions in as a base. There we are, nicely chopped onions. So I'm grating three or four, maybe five big cloves of garlic to get in this sauce. I want it quite punchy, very flavoursome. So we've got coconut oil, loads of garlic, loads of grated ginger. Lovely as the base. Immediately smells amazing, I'll be honest. Add a little bit more oil. And make sure it doesn't burn. Very clean oil, coconut oil. It's great. There we go, beautiful. Great. Okay, I'm going to turn that down real low and let that simmer away and just cook through without browning any more than that. We'll go and make our spice mix. Okay, so the munchak pieces are beautifully browned off. My onion, garlic and ginger and coconut oil is nicely softened. So I'm going to make my own curry paste. Now, you can just buy a jar of curry paste from the shops and that's cool, but there's satisfaction in home cooking and doing it yourself. So I'm going to mostly do it myself. So I'm starting with some coriander seeds in my lovely big pestle and mortar. Love coriander seeds. They've got great flavour and aroma and there's nothing like the flavour of them when you grind them yourself. So I go quite slowly so they don't fly everywhere. And I'm just trying to break the seeds up. And the great thing about these grinders is that you can really use this, this coarse, porous rock to your advantage and get the essential oils and the flavors out. Oh, beautiful. Right, they're ground up. Now I'm gonna start adding. So I've got cumin here. I'm gonna add loads of cumin. And it's one of those great flavors. I've got some ground cinnamon, I'm going to add that, that's a beautiful eastern spice, lovely. I'm going to add some ground turmeric, gives it that colour. Turmeric of course, an amazingly important medicinal root that gives you just a wonderful flavour. <clears throat> I'm going to add some black pepper, in its own right this is a spice, so I'm going to add a good amount of that. Okay, let's give these a nice grind together. And then I've got some garam masala. Garam masala is a general curry spice mix. And I found some of that in my cupboard, and that's the whole point of this, it's store cupboard. So here we are, look, some garam masala. And I'm gonna add a generous amount of garam masala, a tablespoon or so. Now I'm gonna mix. Okie dokie, so I've ground my spices and I'm tipping them into a bowl, like so. I'll make sure I get as much as I can. Groovy. This will be a delicious curry paste. And now just to bind it, I'm going to add some oil, a tablespoon or two of oil. And now I want some heat. I want this to be spicy. So have a look in here. Have a look into that. 
that is the other day I made this and this is Scotch bonnet chilies which are savage little chilies about 200,000 on the Scoville scale pretty hot and I've basically whizzed them up in oil and now that oil's taken on the oomph of the chili and this will determine the heat of my curry. So I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of this, which is quite, quite fierce to be honest. So maybe a tad more, that's it. And now I'll mix until I get a spice paste. That effectively is my homemade curry paste. So let's go and add it. Okay, so coconut oil, onions, ginger, garlic, really simple. Fearsome spice paste. And add all of that in for my homemade curry. Here we are. Again, just store cupboard spices. Everybody's got a drawer full of spices or a cupboard full of spices but we're gonna now just let that cook in. Okie doke, now I'm gonna add, I want a tomato based curry, so I'm gonna add a couple of tins of my favorite pulp tomatoes. And here we have a can of coconut milk. Again, beautiful flavor. And I'm going to scoop out all of it. You tend to get solids and then the actual liquid. So that is an amazing curry base. It's going to be so delicious. It already smells fantastic. Made from scratch. Gorgeous. To finish it off, I've got cardamom pods and cloves here. And I'm going to drop them in and those will add perfume and fragrance to our Munjak curry. Great, so this sauce has simmered for just 10 or 15 minutes just to soften everything up. And I've got some dried apricots here I found in my, um, in my cupboard. Now, you know, you could use a, a mango cut up or any dried fruit like this and it adds that sweetness to the, the curry that's gonna be amazing. So I'm gonna drop those in. Okay, I've got my pot here. I love this clay pot. Earthenware is really nice for slow cooking in. And I'm going to start by putting in my big, big chunks of diced munjak here. Okay, now I'm going to pour in that beautiful curry sauce that we made. Just the right amount. Very simple, but very tasty. Now I haven't seasoned this. I haven't added salt, pepper, because there's bound to be some reduction. So what I thought I'd do, there's a couple more things I'm gonna to add to this. I'm gonna add a lime, which I'm gonna cut just into quarters. Bit of zing in there, drop that in. That's gonna cook in the lime and the coconut. It's gonna be just unbearably tasty, I hope. <laughs> So that curry I'm gonna put in the oven at a pretty low heat at about 150 centigrade, which is about 340 degrees, 330 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna put it in there for four hours because there's, there's shin in here and there's bits of shoulder and there's you know, bits of neck. And those are, those are pieces with loads of connective tissue, collagen, and collagen takes time to break down, but it's amazingly tasty when it does. So, Four hours time, we'll taste it, we'll season it, we'll finish it off, we'll cook some rice. Mm. Well, my Munjak curry's been cooking for four hours and when I, when I brought it out yesterday afternoon, because it's now the following day, it was fabulous, all gorgeous and rich. So what I've done is I've chilled it overnight and let all those flavors develop overnight because I always reckon they're best the next day. Now I've been out stalking this morning and I've come back and it's lunchtime and I'm just warming my curry back up. I'm gonna make a little writer to go with it, which is like a yogurty thing. So I've got a load of chopped parsley there and I've got chopped cucumber here and probably overdid it. And I'm gonna take lime juice to give it some citrus zing. And I'm gonna squeeze a load of lime juice into my writer. And this will be gorgeous spooned over the top of the curry. Like so. And I'll mix this in and I've got 
plain yogurt here, nice natural yogurt, and uh, it, it's just going to be delicious. I don't even know if right is the right word, but something about the flavour of cucumber and yogurt, and I've got some mint from my garden, which I picked a minute ago. Now, plenty of pepper. And this is going to be sensational on top of the curry. Okay, there we go. Right, so there's my writer. I've got some nice basmati rice cooked away here, lovely and fluffy. And uh, we'll pull that munchak out, dole it out and give it a go. So my curry's out of the oven, it's beautiful. It's really tasty. I'm gonna get some rice going on here. And, and this is the thing, it, you, I've made this with munchak, but you could make it with shoulder of any type of deer you like. Literally moose, whitetail, red deer, fallow deer, whatever you fancy. It's gonna be delicious. So let's get the, uh, let's get a load of it in here. Oh, hello. It smells good. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lime over the actual curry because it just adds a sort of shot and the rice, lovely. And now a nice big blob of our writer here over the top. And then I will just taste a bit of this. Here we go. Mm. I suppose it's in our blood as English people that we love curry. And my goodness, does this make a good curry. So simple, so easy to make. Take your time, let it improve overnight. Make yourself a munjack curry. Yum. <laughs>